Do you sense a call to ministry? Seminary is a critical part of preparation for serving the local church, but you have to choose the right seminary, and Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary is an excellent choice. Located in Kansas City, Missouri, and featuring incredible scholars like Dr. Matthew Barrett, Midwestern is committed to producing pastor theologians, graduates who will give of themselves for the church in expository preaching, doctrinal integrity, and discerning pastoral care. Now here's the thing, listeners of Doctrine and Devotion who are ready to begin seminary can apply for free by visiting mbts.edu slash docanddevo using the code docanddevo. And as a thank you for applying, prospective students who use the code will also receive a free Midwestern mirror mug. I have one and it's pretty sweet. Apply to Midwestern Seminary for free by visiting mbts.edu slash docanddevo and be sure to use the promo code docanddevo. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion. It's a podcast. It explores Christian faith, but from a Reformed Baptist perspective, without all the anger and hate. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Did you see that? Did you just see that? No. You didn't? What? What? That what? elders meeting we just came out of. Yeah, it was a good meeting. Woo! Good woo, meeting. Woo, man. It was nice. Started off kind of like a normal one. Just good. It's fine, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and we got some stuff decided. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Sometimes I just got to... St- hey, guys. Sometimes I just got to step in and be like, hey, everybody, this is how it's going to be. And then I just lay out, here's how it's going to be. And um, then all the elders are like, oh, that's so helpful. And then we do that thing. You know, and that's really what... I feel like that's what happened tonight. Uh, were you at the same meeting that was I was that? at? Yeah, I was there. Didn't I lead the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Felt like I was like in charge, man. Mm-hmm. Felt like I was calling shots, calling no. my shots. Yeah, it was uh, good. That don't sound That's right. That's not? No? no? Okay. No, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I said some stuff. Not helpful. Oh, well, you said that's stuff. subjective. Uh, you know, you said some things that were really helpful. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Some things that were mm-hmm. extremely helpful. There you go. And then you got red at one point. Oh, I never got red. You got a little red. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nope. I don't get red. <laughs> a little red. Don't get red. You know, we don't always agree on everything. No, I get huffy. All right, but I never, I never turned red. You turned red. No. <gasps> and I'm not saying like red like mad. No. You know happen. what I mean? No. Flushed. I don't get flushed. You were flushed. No. Doesn't happen. Uh, You had the flush. No. Listen, you're thinking of a different kind of flush. That ain't me. What? I... <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it was cool because it, like I love our elders meetings. And I can honestly say in 15 years, some of a, a handful of them have been really hard. All of them are good and, mm-hmm. and many of them are challenging. But I, but 99% of the time, I walk away from those going, right on. Yeah, like, this nice. Is, these are good people. Nice. I like, yep. you know, I like, and uh, can we say? Can we even say? Nope. We can't say because it's coming out on, oh, no, it's Thursday. Nope. No, I can't say. Cannot say. Well, I'm not going to say the thing. You're going to try. I'm not going to. I could already tell. But it's really cool. <laughs> there you go. Let it be. Let it be. No, it was a good meeting, man. We got stuff great decided meeting. and making progress on stuff. It's cool stuff. We'll be we'll be sharing with all you uh, in the coming weeks when Jimmy's gallivanting around Europe mm, next week. Meetings. Okay. Got meetings. Got meetings. Though I'm going to take two and a half days off mm-hmm. while I'm there. <laughs> Must be nice. It is nice. It is nice. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward. I'm going to miss you. Yeah, well, you said that you would try and call in and do some FaceTime with me. Yeah. So if you I do. Will. Not now, FaceTime with you. Yeah. Like, no, no, for, you know, for episodes. I know. That's not, I'm, I'm not going to FaceTime you. Well, we'll I was going to, I was going to work it into a bit, but you just stepped on it. It's okay. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Good. I'm glad. It's fine. I'm glad I stepped yeah, on no, it. Yeah, no, you're going to. Smashed it. Jimmy's going to call in and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to him when he's in uh, in Europe. That's right. Well, yeah, hopefully it'll work. It'll, yeah, and if it doesn't, all right then. All right you then. You get a three minute episode. Mm-hmm. Have fun with that. Yep. Enjoy. Oh, so it's Monday. We're recording on a Monday. Yep. After our elders meeting. Yep. And uh, after this, I'm going to, when we're done, I'm going to go home and I'll, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have a cigar. I'll definitely do that. Mm. And I'll unwind a little bit. It's Good. Been a long day. Yeah. And then uh, tomorrow, man, hit the ground running, ready to go. Boom. I'm excited after that meeting. Yeah. That was a good meeting. It was a really good meeting. Mm. So Joe, now- are you sure it's good for you to have another cigar? Because you're smoking a cigar now. Now, how many have you had today so far? First of all, 
it's not a competition. I don't need to keep right. track because I'm not like I'm not trying to see like, oh, do I smoke more than that guy? Right. And so, how cool am so I? Or, at, I don't do that. I just, you know, are you have you finished one today? I haven't finished this one. Have you finished <laughs> one today? <laughs> well, of course I have. All right. have I had you, to finish have, one before I. I can't start this one yeah, unless yeah. I finish the one before it. No, no, that hold on now before that. So how many have you had before this one? Let's just put it this way. Can I put it this way? Because yes, I don't keep can. track. I'm never not smoking. How's that? But you're here all day. Mm-hmm. So I know your average. Okay. Like I know how long it takes you mm-hmm. on average. I, I for stopped lunch. for lunch. So I, you know, I, I, my cigar Here's the went thing. out. I would think you had maybe, and I think this is pushing it when I say this, and I'm being okay. sincere, Okay. that I'm going to say you had two before this one. Okay. Let me try and remember. Um, and I think that's pushing it, to be honest. Okay. This would be my second one, actually. I've only had two today. See? Yeah. I even said, told you that. that, that one, and this is, is this my second one? Yeah, I, this is my second that one. That might be your third. Yeah, no, it's my second one. It is, I've only had two today. There you go. And I'll have one more tonight. One more. Now, or two. Have you ever, what? <laughs> Depends on how late I stay up. I mean, have you ever thought about maybe just denying yourself one of these? Well, you know, I would if that was like a biblical thing. <laughs> like, who's telling me uh, to do that? I don't, no, there, nowhere does it say deny your cigars and follow me. It does not say it that, Jimmy. It does not say deny. No. <laughs> just, just, no, stop no, trying no. to make stuff up. Uh, you know what? You're right. It, it, Thank uh, you very there much. There is nothing that says deny mm. your cigars. That's right. You're right, Joe. Thank you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're going to be talking about denying. Yep. Denying cigars. ourselves. Okay, oh, fine. Denying yourself. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're denying ourselves, which mm. may, you know. It very well could. It could. Yeah, very well could relate to denying cigars. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Where is that found, Jimmy? What, what passage are we talking about? Uh, looking at Matthew 16, 24 to 27. Oh, man, all those verses? <laughs> <sighs> all right, go ahead. Uh, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Mm, Heavy. Heavy verses. Mm -hmm. Jesus, just pure truth. But I love how Jesus talks and teaches and preaches because he has a way 2,000 years later to say things in such a way that just cut us right to the heart. And yep. if we're listening at all, it really makes us evaluate ourselves, who we are and what we're doing and what we are. I love these verses. And the concept of denying yourself is absolutely at the core of Christian living. There is no Christian life apart mm-hmm. from this, right? Mm-hmm. If anything mm-hmm. else that, that we do is somehow connected to and built on this, and if it isn't, it really isn't a part of the Christian life in my estimation. So when we're talking about denying yourself, right? Jesus said, and obviously we've all preached or listened to sermons on this, like in those three parts, you know, you deny yourself, take up your cross, follow Jesus. We don't want to get into all that today. We just want to talk a little bit about what it means to deny yourself. Hmm. Um, And so when we, when Jesus says that, and we see this throughout scripture put together in a number of different ways, what are we really talking about? What does it mean to deny ourselves? Well, I think first and foremost, I mean, it's that call to repent, right? Yeah. When we're talking about like laying down ourselves first, I mean, a lot of it is, well, I mean, I think all of it is we very much, maybe, I don't know if this is an American thing. That's just a human nature thing. Let's Mm -hmm. just go with that. But like it, for Americans, we're very much like independent. Oh yeah. We're very much independent. Because we rock and rule and we're the best. Dog eat dog world. Yeah. We come first in everything. Yeah. And it's that self-directed life yep. and what we're repenting because that comes to an end. When we're called to the lay, self-directed life, the yeah. self-directed life comes to an end. And that's part of that repenting there mm. of no longer are we mo- mainly first and foremost focused on ourselves, yep. but on what it is that God is calling us to. Yeah. I, I think you used the word laying down, right? That, yep. that laying down of our selfishness or our selfism that's a word that i i use a lot selfism right it's to, to some degree and we'll talk about this to some degree we all are self-interested and you have to be you can't oh. exist without being self-interested yeah but selfism where you put yourself first where you are the, the the captain of your soul or the captain of your domain as seinfeld would say um 
Is that a bad reference? I don't remember what that, that was that, about. That's not a good no, reference. Not a- <laughs> that's not a good reference, Joe. That's not a good reference. <laughs> that was back when TV, when, when that was risque. Remember when that was risque? Yes. Today, that's not risque at all. That's no. so weird today. Yeah, TV yeah, has changed. Yeah. All right. So, but this idea of like, okay, so to deny yourself is to lay down yourself as the most important being. What that doesn't mean though, right, is sometimes people take it really far to like, Self-deprecating. Yeah. Well, we're right. going to get to that. We're going to hold off. Oh, on sorry, sorry. We're going to get to that later. Sorry, I, want sorry. To, I want us to hold off. I want us to talk about what it is. And then I'll, All right, I'll, fine, I'll, fine. hold on to that. It's good. No, that's really, really good. Hang on to that. Um, I don't I don't mean to be bossy. No, no. Just uh, like you were in that elders meeting trying I, to be. I was guys, not. Guys, guys. Listen, I'm the lead pastor. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> I preach all the time. Gosh, was that a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, sorry, Joe, did you say something? <laughs> Just play with your blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Just color your coloring book, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We got it over here. But yeah, you're you're talking about this laying down of our lives is is like this this new orientation to everything that yeah. we do. Yeah, no, because when I mean, you think, like you said, it's very American. It's very human. I, I I totally that resonates with me, right? It is very human, but it's more American than it is almost any other culture. Like it is me first, mm-hmm. uh, number one, looking out for number one, and so like becoming a Christian, following Jesus is is a radical reorientation not just to a couple of things like becoming a christian is like yeah. oh yeah i got jesus in my pocket now like oh this is a cool thing mm-hmm. like it's a completely new way of seeing yourself god and the world around you and so this this idea of laying down yourself first that is only possible if God then becomes first, right? We're not, I mean, you, you could lay, you could step aside and put something else there. Like mm. it could be your, it could be your spouse. It could be your uh, vocation. Yep. It could be your kids. It could be ministry. It could be your kids sports on Sunday. <laughs> oh, Joey's, <laughs> Joey's sitting here trying to knock down some <laughs> idols. It could be so many things, right? It could be cigars. It could be your mm-hmm. hobbies. It mm-hmm. could be your interests. Mm-hmm. Like what comes, and that's really about me. I mean, it would be about your, that's still about Yeah, me, yeah, just travel. <laughs> right, it could be. It could be. <laughs> like there, there's a lot of ways in which we put ourselves or other things first. But fundamentally, like first and foremost, I think when you say, like, okay, we're laying down ourselves as first and foremost, that's because God becomes first and foremost. Like we become radically Christ-centered. Mm. Like Philippians chapter three, Verses 7 through 11. All these verses? All of these verses. Paul talks about this, right? Because he's talking about like what he denied. He denied himself. He denied his past. He denied his accomplishments, his heritage. And by denying them, he doesn't mean like, oh, well, it doesn't, there's no consequence or or value in my heritage. Of course there is. But he doesn't put weight on those things in terms of his identity and his mm. life. So here's what he says. Whatever gain I had in terms of his own personal righteousness and his pedigree, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake. I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. Most of you know what that word means. Scubalon in Greek, it, it means dung. It is absolute trash. I've, I counted all as trash in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, imputed righteousness, that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. That is a Christ-centered life. Mm. He can look at everything that is in his life that he had accomplished, good things, bad things, all those things that he put so much stock in and all of it to him compared to Christ is rubbish. It's not worth anything. It's that radical orientation. And we, for our um, during our uh, elders meeting, um, we read from the Baptist catechism, right? We just did question one. Mm, yep. Who is the first and chiefest being? God is the first and chiefest being. And we weren't even really planning on looking at the Baptist catechism in the elders meeting, but, uh, but we decided like, well, I'm going to start going through that. It's like a little devotional exercise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, and that really speaks to this. Like objectively, God is the first and chiefest being, but practically speaking in our lives, he only becomes the first and chiefest being when we deny ourselves and believe like faith is, the, yeah. is the connecting point there. So, okay. So if, if this is what, 
part of this is, or at least fundamentally it is, uh, to deny ourselves. It means to dethrone ourselves and to make sure that Christ is on the throne, that our triune God is first in all things, is that all that it means is denying ourselves only a, a vertical orientation to God. Well, no, it's 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 also a you know horizontal orientation, and for that, that's we become others oriented. First Corinthians ten twenty four. Let no one seek his own good, but the mm-hmm. good of his neighbor. Yeah. So we are thinking about those around us. Yep. We are looking out for their interests. We are looking for. Uh, uh, we want. We're seeking after their flourishing. Yeah. Now, what that what uh, that's not uh, maybe for some, especially in the COVID area. Mm-hmm. Era, sorry. Or area. Area. What's your COVID area, Jimmy? <laughs> 630. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was like under your armpits or something. Oh, I didn't gosh. know where COVID area is. <laughs> but I mean, it, it became like this battle cry of of just allowing anything to happen mm-hmm. when it came to, quote, you know, government overreach. I'm going to yeah, say yeah. it. Yeah. You know, um, but that's, that's not it. But when we're talking about others flourishing, we are seeking that which is best for them. Mm-hmm. Right. And it doesn't say, don't seek your own good. It just says, let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbors. In other words, it, let no one seek their own good alone is the point, right? Mm. Like Philippians 2, 3, 4 says, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So there it is. You do look to your own interests. Oh, of that, course. That, that's, a, that's a, okay. Oliver wow. is like, and I've got mine on silent, so it's not me. Well, no, it is you because I've got mine on silent nope, and mine, I've already been mine's, talking about it. Mine's on silent. Mine's it's on, you. Nope, mine's on silent. Mine's already gone. No, it's not. It is. It is Wait not. a minute. My phone wasn't. I knew it. Okay. See? Oliver. See, there you are, turning red. One of our worship leaders, Oliver's great. Triathlete, super good looking, mm-hmm. handsome. No, he's been texting me too. Okay. But my, my notifications are not coming up because. But, but I, I told him, I said, don't worry, I'm busy. No, you said to him, text. I did say text. I said, See? don't call. That's on you. Dang it, it is on me. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So, it's not that you don't seek your own good. You, you have to. But there is, you do something in tandem with that. You're constantly looking for the good of your neighbor. So you're not elevating yourself above other people. Mm -hmm. You're denying yourself as being first in order to like count others as, as equals. And this whole idea of in humility, count others more significant than yourself. That's a challenge, man. Oh yeah. Now I, sometimes it's easy for me to count others more significant than me. Some people I'm like, yeah, you know why? That guy's obviously more significant than I am. (laughs) But but, but, then see, but, but, yeah, but what's that criteria? Right, right. It's sub- totally subjective. It's a subjective. very subjective, mm-hmm. and it's very superficial criteria. Yeah. Oftentimes, yeah. it's a yeah. very superficial criteria that we place out there to say, "This is how you know this person is worthy right. of of being placed on a pedestal above me." Right. Yeah. This person is worth my attention and my respect and my submission, but not everybody. Exactly. And the gospel turns all of that on the head, right? Saying like, "No, no, no." You've you've learned in Christ that he comes first, and now you are on a level plane with everybody else. And so you need to look to other people's interests, count them worthy of more honor is another verse that's um that's out there. So yeah. Is, is it is it just out there, Joe? I can't remember. <laughs> There's just it, another it's verse out, out, it's there. out there. It's out there in the ether. I should say it's in there. It's in there. It's, in it's the, just out, out there. there. It's not out there. It's in the Bible. <laughs> like it's like this says, uh, count others more significant. There's another one like uh, seek to outdo one another. Oh yeah, and showing honor. Yeah, yeah that's out there. Yeah, it's in there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm tired, man. It's a long. Been I know. A long I can day. tell you're tired. It's okay, Joey. Let's all right, come all on. Right. You're good. Living on less isn't easy, especially in this economy. One of the ongoing challenges is the continually rising cost of health care. Just a few weeks ago, I was on a road trip with my family, and we had to make an emergency stop at urgent care as one of my kids got very sick. And it wasn't cheap. Well, there's a solution to rising health care costs. Christian Healthcare Ministries. This is America's longest-serving health cost-sharing ministry, and they've helped hundreds of thousands of Christians with billions in eligible medical bills. Founded in 1981, Christian Healthcare Ministries is the OG. It's the original healthcare sharing ministry for Christians. CHM is a voluntary health cost sharing ministry through which participating Christians work together to share the burden of medical expenses. To learn more and see how it all works, visit chministries.org slash podcast. That's right. Christian Healthcare Ministries is a budget-friendly 
health care cost solution. Check it out at chministries.org slash podcast. There's a ton of Bible apps out there to choose from. But for the past few years, our favorite by far is Dwell. They have over a dozen new recordings of the Bible. They've handpicked voices that will engage and inspire you. They have a number of translations to choose from. We favor the ESV, but they also have KJV, NIV, CSB, and many others. Now, you may be familiar with Dwell as that Bible app that reads the scripture to you in various voices that you can choose from. You may know that it allows for a music bed of various styles to accompany the reading. But you can also read along as you listen, and I love this feature. I use Dwell for some of my focused devotional exercises, but I also use it while driving, working in my office, or just chilling on the back porch at night when I'm doing my thing. To get started with Dwell, we want you to go to dwellapp.io slash jofo, or just visit the links in the show notes to get 10% off of a yearly subscription, or 30% off of Dwell for Life. 30% off means you save 60 bucks and no more payments. So make sure that you visit dwellapp.io slash jofo and commit to scripture for the rest of this year or even for the rest of your life. Okay, so now when we talk about this though, denying yourself, uh, and when scripture kind of gives us this idea, clearly it's about putting God first, right? And oftentimes very explicitly Jesus. Um, And clearly it's about uh, putting others first, right? Or seeking to love your neighbor and, and bless others and seek their good. But also, uh, there's this idea that in denying yourself, you're denying your sinful, selfish impulses, right? Because th- now that seems like, well, of course, like, but yeah, but that, that is a denial of self. It's a denial of the old self. It's a denial of the old person that you used to be. But those temptations and that principle of sin still remains. Mm. So we're constantly exercising this positively. And okay, I'm going to deny myself by exalting Christ and lifting up others, but I'm also going to deny myself by putting to death the deeds of the flesh. Yeah, I mean, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, Mm -hmm. whom you have from God? Mm -hmm. You are not your own. Oh, there it is. For you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. You are not your own. Yeah. That's like the one of the most significant no, I, oh, sayings. Oh, I'm in American. <laughs> I am my own man. Sure. My body, my choice. Like we, 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 that's how we think and we talk. And of course, there is a sense in which yes, you're responsible for yourself. And we, but and you, yeah, you don't fund- want to be put taking drain all and putting it in. Is that what it's called? Drano. That's it. Drano. Drano. Remember Drano? What are you doing with Drano? I don't know. I'm just saying you don't put it in your body. Okay. Don't do that. Why would you do that? So, some you got put chemicals really bad. weird here. No, you're, you're funneling Drano in some way. I've never funneled it. Okay, all right. Um, but yeah, like, and, so, and this is this is specifically applied to the body here in the context of sexual immorality. But the principle is, you do not belong to yourself. Yes. Well, okay. Okay, that's a bold statement. So who do I belong to? God. Why? Two reasons, really, right? He created you, therefore he owns you, but that's not the reason given here. Mm, Because you are bought with a price. Redeemed. So like God doubly owns us. He, 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 He owns us by virtue of creation. Yep. And he owns us by virtue of redemption. Like we belong entirely to him. And so what we do with our body, our soul, the entirety of our being should be... Uh, connected to his will, his glory, mm. his ways. Well, which is why it says so, right? Mm-hmm. In summary here, for the purpose, so glorify God in your body, right? So glorify yeah. him in what we do. Like we mentioned at the front end, it's a reorientation of yeah. everything. So glorify God in all that you do. Man, it, again, here, most explicitly and directly, it's talking about your body and sexual immorality, you know, the sins that you commit that aren't sexually immoral with your mind, you know, uh, with mm-hmm, your thoughts. Mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm. But here it is something that you do with your body. You're joining to another person that's meant for marriage. Um, not it's not meant, intended to be enjoyed outside of that. And so, you know, we can talk about all kinds of things, you know, like whether that's, you know, pornography, masturbation, all these things that relate to that. But the principle, I do think, goes well beyond it to like, are we using our existence for the glory of God or merely for the pleasure of ourselves. Because maybe it's not some gross sin like, 
you know, uh, and by gross, I mean heinous. I don't mean icky, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, may, mm-hmm. maybe it's not the, the exploitation of a sex worker uh, in pornography. Maybe it's not sexual immorality, but maybe you are overindulging, right? With your, with your life, you, you could be drinking too much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you could be living for your own pleasure in such a way where the, maybe these things are even lawful, but you're living for them and for your own appetites rather than enjoying those things as gifts and therefore glorifying God with your body. Mm. I even like how sinful impulses relate to all kinds of things. One that comes to mind is Hebrews 13. Keep your life free from the love of money. This is denying yourself because we all love money. (laughs) I mean, uh, I don't really know anybody who isn't really fond of money. Maybe we're going to quibble over the word. Well, do I love it? How much do I love it? All right, fine. Uh, we all like money. We all need money. You can't really exist in 21st century America without it. Mm-hmm. Uh, money is good. I've, I really haven't met many people that that would say like, I wish I had less. I wish I had less money. I'm sure they're out there. I'm, I'm sure, sure they're out there. there. Some, just, a really rich guy. I don't think I've met. I don't think I've met. <laughs> I haven't met them. But yeah, even those people, right? Like even for the like those that are, do have quite a bit are always looking to attain more. Yeah. Or just be careful with what they... So, but like, keep your life free from that. So, listen, and this is the point. You can have nothing and still love money. And you can have everything and love money. It's not about how yep, much you have. Yep. It's about your heart. So, keep your life free from that. Be content with what you have. It's another really hard statement, right? So, well, how much is enough? What you have. Well, what if I need more? That's okay. But you got to learn to be content with what you have. Be content, yeah. Until you get more that you and might be actually And be content need. with that. Yep. But the reason is because... He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, so that's like that's the that's the key. Right? Oh, it's because God is first. If God yes. is first, yep. if you have denied yourself and followed Christ, if he is first, then you can be content with what you have because you have the most important valuable thing or person, which is God. Hmm. I think this idea of denying yourself is I mean, I think we need to I need to think more about it. I think we need to be working it out in practical ways in our lives a lot more because you know it sounds good and maybe we we, we tend to think of it in terms of a conversion you know like oh well, uh, I, deny yourself yeah yeah take so, up a cross, okay, well, follow yeah. me yeah because i like i i loved satan and uh you know satan well i was gonna i was gonna try to alliterate oh i i didn't know where you're going and i that's why i was I just, trying to think I, like I, what did I, I like before i became a christian like it was like heavy metal i was trying to think of it as a, like a heavy metal uh evil stuff Immorality, and then when I became uh, speed, <laughs> there's a lot of things I liked. There's an S, <laughs> Satan, speed, sex. I don't know. And then it's like when I was converted, there was this radical shift. Now the the radical shift was God at work in me, but then I had to take that shift and then like work it out, work out yes. my salvation. Like okay, so with this new orientation, am I going to cultivate this and walk in this and mm-hmm. continue to deny myself? I got to continually deny myself. I remember. You know, I started smoking weed in fifth grade and um, out of a big old glass bong. That was how I learned to smoke weed. And hey, thanks, Dave. That's my brother. Anyway, he's dead now. So anyways, but, so I, I learned, to, I, got it, I got into marijuana and all through growing up, I, I loved the smell of it. And I still find the smell very pleasing when I occasionally smell it out there walking around town. Um, and when I was a new convert, I was working at a, uh, at a cabinet factory i didn't i didn't make the cabinets i wasn't skilled i unloaded the semi-trailers of their cabinets and put it in the warehouse that was my job and uh and all the guys there they would go in the back because i built this room out of boxes like all these aisles of cabinets but i built it in such a way so like we had like a an empty box you could open it up and walk into this hidden room inside you could hang out in there and the guys would go in there and they'd smoke weed and they would blow it at me and everything and try and get me to do it and honestly i wanted to because that was such a part of my life. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a huge part, but it was a part of my life. And I liked it. And I remember consciously thinking like, I have to deny that. I have to deny that. It, yeah. it, not only because it's illegal, it was illegal at the time, but also because like, that's not good for me. This is going to take me in, a, in the wrong direction. But like, that was like a new Christian conversion kind mm-hmm, of a thing mm-hmm, with like mm-hmm, rather mm-hmm. dramatic sins. Um, w- how what this means for us in our everyday lives, I think, needs to be worked out continually. But first, let's go back to what you started to talk about. What this doesn't mean, mm. okay? D- denying yourself, God first, consider others worthy of more honor. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean. And what were you saying? 
well, I guess taking like neglecting your own well being, right? Like like that that self deprecating, like that uh, not taking care of yourself, thinking less of yourself than others in the sense of like I'm worthless, I'm worthless, yeah. depression, right? Uh, like that. I don't. That's not what this means. That's that's warped funhouse mirror theology. Yeah, that's bad Calvinism. Mm. Oh, I'm, uh, we're all totally depraved, and everybody's sinful, and then you have this defeatist corrupt sort of mentality i agree it, it it does not mean that it doesn't mean becoming a doormat and letting people walk all over you mm. yes you need to turn the other cheek right yes you, you you need to go the extra mile but that doesn't mean that you s- subject yourself to abuse by like say your spouse or yep. your parents or whatever yep. you don't it, do that it doesn't mean that you're just a yes man right not actually oh. sharing your thoughts and your mm-hmm. opinions and uh and your view and your beliefs right yeah well listen uh, if you're my boss and uh, and you're telling me to do something, uh, and maybe this is not it's not even illegal. Like it's just like oh, if if I want to honor you, you're my boss. But it doesn't just mean like well, I, if I'm going to consider him worthy of more honor, I should just do whatever he says and not speak into this process, right? If you actually have knowledge in your area and you have a better way, you should let your boss know, mm-hmm. right? And being a yes man, I mean, probably most popularly, people think about almost like a sycophantic sort of like. Oh yeah, this is my guy, and I'm just gonna back him up no matter yep, what. Back him everything he does, everything he says. I'm just gonna go along with it each and every single time, right? So we are still called to. We still love ourselves, right? Yeah. We still take care of ourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. That's the. <laughs> so you're supposed to love yourself. Yep. Yep. But uh, you love God above all. That is. Yeah. First and foremost, chief. That that is everything. Yeah, man, it's that. It's like you said. It's 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 this radical repri- reorientation, reprioritizing of our lives. That's another way to think about it. reprioritizing, mm. right? Because and I mean, I think mature people do this, right? Like, I need to check my priorities. I yeah. need to reprioritize my life. Things get out of whack. We maybe it's we always start- good to do that, as, like that, a self assessment. Yeah, and you know. that, it's always good. Well, we need to do that spiritually speaking. Mm. Like, how, what are my priorities? So, Jimmy, in our daily lives, mm. what are some areas? where we all should probably be evaluating our priorities and asking ourselves, am I actively denying myself and following Jesus in these areas or these relationships? Yeah. I mean, looking at, uh, looking at our marriage, right? How, how are we denying? How is my wife denying herself? No, I totally agree. Husbands love your wives. Yes, that's right. As Christ loves the church Mm -hmm. as King and and Lord gave himself worthy of all gave himself for her. Yep. So now there's she owes a, him. No, no, there's a denying. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a denying there, right? Like how how yeah. are we how are we giving of ourselves in marriage? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're as husbands, like this is like we're we're naturally going and we should think about okay, what does this mean for me? I always love it. Like guys are like, man, I would die for my wife. Yeah, well, how come you won't like turn off the TV and listen to her when she talks then? Mm, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's less costly. Yep. You say you die for her, but you, you know, you won't. Uh, you won't surprise her with like uh, with affection and attention or an outing or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, you won't that, plan a date night. Yeah, it's like the all of that stuff matters. You won't do what she likes to do, like your marriage. You won't watch her the the, the dumb shows she wants to watch. They do like the dumb shows. Oh. You know, what my wife watches. What's that? Non, almost only thing she watches. Mm. You're gonna love it. Mm. Cooking shows. I, it's yeah. all she wants. The only thing she wants. And I'm trying to tell you, you got to watch this. This is a great series. You love it. It's like, no, I like to watch my cooking show. Yep. And then you sit down and watch it with her. No, because she only <sighs> watches it when she's working. She has it on. She ah. listens to it with her wireless earbuds and she's cleaning and she has it on. And she kind of peeks at it every once in a while. Okay. okay. Uh, no, we don't really sit down to watch stuff. Mm. When she goes to bed is when I start watching things. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it does. It does relate to and your kids. I've shared it before, but Steve McCoy, like just, convicted me to the core one time when I was complaining like my kids always want to play this game they were really little and whatever the game was I don't remember I think we called it dragon it was basically dad has to get down on his hands and knees and he's the dragon and the kids would like beat him up mm. and I was like that game that game sucks I don't like that game because you're losing yeah, every I don't time like, it's just like it's just not fun <laughs> it's just not fun and and Steve very kindly like said you're supposed to play the games they like to play why would they want to play the games you want to play? Yeah. Like you, you could teach them chess and I did, but like, and they liked it, but like you got to play the game. But like, how are you denying yourself with your kids? 
it's just super easy to think like, listen, I'm the adult. I've got a lot going on. You're supposed to honor me. Mm -hmm. So just do what I say. Why are you arguing with me? Okay, all that's fine to a degree, but also how are you denying yourself for them? And don't just say like, well, I go out and I work, you know, 70 hours a week. Like, okay, that's one way in which you're denying yourself. Yeah. Maybe, unless you love that and live for that, then you're not really denying yourself. Yep. You're getting off on it. Yep. How are you denying yourself for your kids? What if you're not married? What if you don't have kids? Well, what about your siblings? Like, how are mm. you then, you know, uh, you don't ever talk yourself? about that. Like, when, no. when do we talk about that? How sisters and brothers are denying themselves for each other? Yeah, no, I don't know why we don't, right? Like, uh, you got to think, you know, you guys are uh, not only, let's just say, I mean, you're in a, you're, you're in a family. Yeah. I mean, you've ra been raised together. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time together. Um, it seems like a natural place where there would be a denying of oneself. Right. Uh, as one is maybe older than the other. Right. Being able to engage in those games, mm -hmm. inviting them along to be a part of part of maybe, you know, uh, the activities that that you're a part of. I think you tend to see it more when there's hardship. I feel like when when life is really difficult, when kids have very little, they tend to look out for each other more. Mm. You know, when it's not that safe, when there are real needs, then I see you know, big brothers looking out for little sisters or I see, or I'll see a little sister looking for ways to, to help out her, her big brother. What are you looking for? You need a lighter? Got it. Got it. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah. How many is that for you today, Jimmy? You want to talk about how many I've been smoking? All right. Let's just relax. No, okay. All let's right. Just relax That's what here. I thought. Let's That's just relax. I, I did. Okay. It was a bit mm -hmm. and you know, it was a okay. bit. No, it's fine. You want to do the whole thing. I was just saying, but uh, yeah, Jimmy's on a, like a cleanse again. He's doing this whole cleanse now. Like not doing all kinds of stuff, eating different, not drinking whiskey. It's this whole thing. Though, it's on pause in Europe. It's oh, how, it has to be. It, how you, how you, you can't? Gonna, you can, no. How are you going to be in Italy and not drink? And wine? The, di the difference is, yeah. And but the food over there, like it's all, it's all, it's all natural stuff though. It's, it's like butter it's and stuff, but it's, it's not here. It's so the yeah, Michelle and I have just been denying ourselves for the month. Yeah. To. Uh, enjoy this yeah no I, th I think that's good so i I, th I think that's one way it happens and you you can do this in your friendships yep you should think about your employment um and just in society in general you're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself your neighbor isn't the person that you like to hang out with your neighbor is your neighbor yeah it's the people that you encounter and they don't they're not always great people so in your life we should be asking am i actively denying myself for god's glory and for the good of others I'd like to hear what everybody else thinks, Jimmy. Mm, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram, Twitter, at Doc and Devo, or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineAndDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast of the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. You know, we got that fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. We got blog posts and video content over at the website. And you want to support the podcast and get exclusive commercial-free content? Subscribe to Doctrine and Devotion All Access. Subscribers get free weekly devotional meditations Monday through Friday and the Banter of Truth podcast on Tuesdays. To sign up, click the link on your podcast player for this episode that says support this podcast or head over to DoctrineAndDevotion.com slash all access. Later. Later.